In this video, I'm going to show you how to update variables and then keep those values for the next time you load a level. We're going to leverage the game instance to do this because that is by far the easiest way to do so. So first, to create a game instance, you're going to go into your C++ classes and then you can right click to create a new C++ class, go into all classes and look for game instance. We want to go and extend off of the regular game instance and you can name this whatever you want. Once your project loads, everything is pretty much good to go. This game instance class is going to extend off of the uGame instance. And in terms of functions that you might want to be aware of, you of course have the ability to create a constructor, as well as the init and shutdown overrides. Init is the initialize and is caused when the game instance is created, and then shutdown happens when the game instance is, well, shutting down at the end. These can be great methods for setting up and cleaning up your game instance. Now to show you when these particular things run in a little more detail, I have set up a couple of logs. During the constructor, I say that we are being constructed. During initialize, I say that we are being initialized. And during our shutdown, I say we are shutting down. The only other thing of note in the code here is that I have this U property blueprint read write variable called health that is going to be used for the rest of our example. The most important thing I can say here is you can put as many or as little variables or other information inside of your game instance. Anything that you put here will be allowed to transport in between levels, and that is the power that I'm going to show you. But first, to show you when these types of methods run. Let's go back into our project and I'm going to compile. If I open up our output log and wait for it to be finished compiling, you can see here, once the compilation is completed, we can see the constructor runs, and we can see that because of this log here. The game instance is now constructed. When I go ahead and hit play, and we look into our logs, when I scroll up here, we are going to see that during the initialization process, our game instance is initialized. And further, when I hit stop, we can see that our game instance is shut down. Now from there, let's get into the real power of this, which is bringing variables such as player's health, stamina, etc., from one level to the next. Because let's be honest, we've all been there. Inside of our third person character, we'll set up a value like health, we'll set it to 100. We'll have other things such as this health changer that go and knock down the player's health a bit. And then the moment that we reload the level, everything would go and be the same. And then once we go and reload the level or the player traverses to the next level, all of their values default back to their basic values. And obviously we don't want that. And just to show you the problem, again, if I run into our health changer, our health hits 75, and if I reload the level, we can see our health returns back to 100. We are going to leverage the game instance in order to get around this. So first, to make sure you're using the game instance that you have actually set up, we're going to go into Edit, Project Settings, and then you can go into Maps and Modes, and at the bottom of this screen, we have our game instance class down here, and you can make sure this is equal to whatever specific game instance you had created in the previous step. Now from there, it's as simple as putting information into the game instance and then retrieving that information later. Since the game instance exists outside of the level's bounds, it is a great place to keep all of this information. So to refresh your memory inside of the code, I have one variable called health, but again, expand this to fit whatever use case you want. Now, usually this would be done with a bunch of different delegates and events, but for simplicity and just to show you the basic behavior, inside of our health changer, we can see that when the overlap with our player begins, we set their health to 75. And just because it's here and convenient, I am also going to get our game instance, cast it to our specific game instance that we created, and then set the health on that to also be 75. You can see where the logic on this needs to expand to fit your use case, but again, this is for an example. If I compile and save this, and then I hit play, we can go ahead and hit our health changer. And then when we go and refresh, we can see that it's still resetting. Well, that's because we've only done half the job. Inside of our game instance, the value is 75, but our player, our poor, poor, happy player, hasn't retrieved that value yet. So if I go into our player's blueprint, I can now set it up so that on our begin play or whenever a level or something has started, we are going to get our game instance, get the health off of the game instance, and then set our player's health accordingly. So let's compile save, and I'll show this off now. We run in, get our health adjusted, and then we go to the circle, and we can see that our health remains the same, thus allowing us to take this value into a new level, be it the same reloaded level or a brand new one. Game instances are especially powerful for everything that needs to be accessed across levels. This can save you a lot of redundant calls. I, for instance, have been using game instances for my save data because I only want to access my save slot once and then keep it on every level that I'm going to. I hope this quick tutorial on how to set up a game instance and to the basics on what it can do has been helpful. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.